Welcome to this week's Independent News from Canada. My name is Ed Johnson. This week we have breaking news from Jack Etkin. We have a book review about how income inequality is not really a good thing for any of us. And thirdly, how drama in Parliament affects the news and the lack of it. So here's Jack with breaking news. Thanks, Ed. Well, this isn't exactly breaking news because it happened about 90 years ago. But on the other hand, I don't remember this ever being reported in the media, so it's kind of breaking news. The story is that corporate America funded Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. A story that sounds a bit crazy, but the deeper you look into it, it only gets crazier. If you Google Bush Hitler Guardian, the first story you'll see is from the British newspaper The Guardian. The story is titled, How Bush's Grandfather Helped Hitler's Rise to Power. And to quote from the story, the Guardian has obtained confirmation from newly discovered files in the U.S. National Archives that a firm of which Prescott Bush was a director was involved with the financial architects of Nazism. Prescott Bush was the father and grandfather of the two presidents Bush, and the bank he worked for, Union Banking Corporation, was tied into the most powerful U.S. industrialists and corporations of the time, in the 1920s and 1930s. Following the war and his support for the Nazis, Mr. Bush served in the U.S. Senate from 1952 to 1963. By the late 1930s, Brown Brothers Harriman and UBC had bought and shipped millions of dollars of gold, fuel, steel, coal, and U.S. Treasury bonds to Germany, both feeding and financing Hitler's rise to power and his build-up to war. But Mr. Bush is only a small part of the story. Many large American corporations worked with the Nazis to help them defeat much of Europe, bomb England, and fight a brutal war against the Soviet Union that killed millions and millions of people. And of course, later on, when the United States entered the war, these corporations could profitably supply all sides as people fought to kill each other for corporate profit. It was win-win for big business. And really, what was it all about? Among the corporations that supported Hitler and fought for the Nazis were IBM, which helped with the concentration camps, Standard Oil, now Exxon, which helped fuel the German war machine and was especially helpful in the bombing of Britain, and Ford, which used slave labor to help build Hitler's military. And as author Bradford Snell wrote, Hitler could not have invaded Poland or Russia without their good friends at General Motors. This is what the corporations will do to make money and keep their power. They will stop at nothing. And they are still doing exactly the same thing today, creating war and trouble and death to make money and keep power. Today, it's widely believed that corporate America funds ISIS, just as it funded Hitler and the Nazis almost a century ago. But if you mention that fact, it sounds crazy because the media, which the corporations own, will never report it. The fact that all of this can be kept secret and our wonderful media, which always pretends to be our friend, will never report the truth, shows just how terrible a situation we're really in. Good luck to us all, and back to you, Ed. The Spirit Level is a book written by two British university professors in 2009. The book says that if the distribution of income in a society is more equal, it will be a better society in many, many ways. Here are some words about the book from a review in the British newspaper The Guardian. If Britain were to concentrate on making its citizens' incomes as equal as those of people in Japan and Scandinavia, we would each have extra several weeks of holiday a year, we would be thinner, we would each live a year or so longer, and we trust each other more. So things as different as having more free time, our levels of trust, and our health care are all impacted by how equal our incomes are. The book says that in a country with more equal incomes, we are all better off. 
Even the richest, whose incomes will be less in a more equal society, are happier and healthier and better off. Apparently, you can't buy love and you can't buy happiness. And that is interesting in a country like Canada, where our corporate and political leadership have done everything they could for the past 30 years to create more income inequality. This graph shows what happened in Canada from 1982 to 2010. Income rose on an average of by 13.5%, but the income of the bottom 90% increased by only 2%, while the income of the top 10% increased by 75%. And at the very top, the top 0.1% saw their income grow by a staggering 160%. Income inequality causes shorter, unhealthier, and unhappier lives. It increases the amount of violence in our society. Income inequality leads to more obesity, more imprisonment, and more addiction. More income inequality leads to more teenage pregnancies, and its function as a driver of consumption depletes the planet's resources. And all of these bad things happen more when income is less equally divided. But there's a very widespread intuition that inequality is socially divisive and corrosive. And that's just what the data shows. I think most people know quite a bit about the data. And if I asked you, what country has more homicide than Britain in the rich developed world? I expect most people would suggest the United States. Or if I asked you which countries have much less violence in the rich developed world, you'd probably say, the Nordic or Scandinavian countries. If I asked you about obesity, you'd probably give the same answer. Or the size of prison populations. Or levels of teenage pregnancy. What I think people don't know is that all those problems that have a remarkably similar distribution uh, internationally are closely associated with the levels of inequality in uh, each society. And Canada has been changed into exactly that society where the rich have far too much and the poorest have so little that they are forced by our leaders to live on the streets with nothing. How's that for income inequality? According to professors Wilkinson and Pickett, we all pay a price for income inequality. Look at where our society is being taken by our leaders. We have more debt, we have fewer public services, and not enough money for our public schools. We have a badly damaged health care system, homeless people living on the streets, more violence, more crime, more sickness. The common, denom the common denominator for all of this may be something as simple as income equality. Here I think is a good example of how the corporations and their politicians and their media work together to trick us. Do you remember this story? It was a very big story when in May of 2016, Justin Trudeau stormed across the floor of the House of Commons and accosted two members of Parliament. This story was big news for weeks. Lots of people were very angry and we were told that what Mr. Trudeau did was so unusual that it was unprecedented. So was Justin Trudeau just in a bad mood that day or was something else in play? Well, do you remember this story? Canada approves the sale of genetically contaminated salmon to Canadians. Now some, including myself, might say that this salmon story was actually more important than Mr. Trudeau's push. But this salmon story is something that corporate Canada might not want us to know about. And Mr. Trudeau also might not want us to know about this terrible thing he did to us. Imagine him making us the guinea pigs in this horrible corporate experiment of eating genetically contaminated fish, and without even telling us. Now interestingly, the attack in the House of Commons happened on May 18, 2016, and the approval of the GMO salmon happened one day later, on May 19, 2016. And one story got about 1,000 times more media coverage than the other story. But which story really was more important for us, and our health, and our environment? Why did the media go so crazy over the push story, and why did they ignore the salmon story? 
Was it just bad timing? Or was the push staged in order to give the media an excuse to ignore the real story? Wouldn't it be nice if all this anger in our parliament was about the government's decision to poison us with GMO salmon? Wouldn't it be nice to see our parliamentarians yelling and arguing about that? Wouldn't it be nice if they tried to protect us from this evil act by our pathetic Prime Minister and his friends in corporate Canada? But no, the Salmon decision was made quietly and with virtually no publicity. And that is how we are betrayed by our media and our politicians day after day and year after year. And really, it has to stop. So that's it for this week. Independent News from Canada will be back next week with more stories. And thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date on all our latest videos.